Welcome to another episode of Questions Are Answers. And today we're going to be talking about how you are controlled by your own thinking until you become aware of it. So we're going to dive in into exactly why we are being controlled um, by our own minds, what that really means, and then how to break out of it and to stop a lot of the self-destructive habits, thinking negative thoughts that we have in our lives. And this was really inspired by a message that I got from Instagram. And so I just really wanted to share what my thoughts were on this topic and what they did in order to break out of that vicious cycle of their negative thinking and my own thoughts on it and, and what I do personally. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first step um, to really realize why we are controlled by our own thinking is to understand that how we think about something is how we end up doing it. So if we think that we are not good enough or that we don't deserve to have X amount of money, then we will pursue those actions that reflect what we're thinking. So our world is created from the inside out, which is our perspective of the world is crafted by our own thinking, our own biases, our own conditioning. All of that is included in this. So when we're thinking and we're not really conscious of what we're actually thinking, we are literally being controlled by what we've been conditioned to believe, even if it's not what we actually believe ourselves. And you can probably think of a few instances, but a lot of times when we're growing up, we believe something. And then after we grow up, we realize that a lot of the things that we grew up to believe aren't actually true. So what we are aware of, we can't actually change. And the first step in beginning to break out of a lot of these negative patterns that we have is to become aware of, well, one, what we're thinking, and number two, that we are thinking. Those are two very different things. What we're thinking about is one thing, and what that means is the content of our, our actual thinking. So are we thinking about the past? Are we thinking about the future? Are we thinking about an event that happened? What is it that's, that is actually going on in our minds? And number two is that we're thinking. Understanding the difference between thoughts and thinking will allow you to separate the two and then become aware that you're thinking. So when we're thinking, we're actually thinking about the past or the future. It's not in the present moment, which is why I say thinking is the root cause of all suffering. As soon as we start ruminating about the past, we begin to judge it, we begin to criticize it, we begin to think that, oh, it should have been something different. And that distorts our reality and our perception of it. And we're not actually in the present moment anymore. And that's where all the suffering occurs, which is in the past or having anxiety about the future. What if this happens? Or what if it doesn't go well? Or just ruminating on a million different things that could go wrong. Those things, that's a form of thinking and that will cause us a lot of anxiety, stress, just a lot of emotion, emotional turmoil. So when that happens, understand that it's that we're thinking. So we don't have to pay too much attention to the actual content just yet. And there's a time and a place to pay attention to, co to the content. But if you understand that the root cause is that we're thinking, we can just let go of everything. And that is the, the, the single thread that will just, once that's cut, then we are free and we can find peace, love, and joy in the present moment. Once we stop thinking, period, that's when we return back into the present moment to be able to feel all that love, peace, and joy that we innately are, that is always ever present. We just have to be in the present moment to actually feel that. And that's why I always say our natural state is love, peace, and joy. It's just as soon as we begin thinking, we eject ourselves out of the present moment where all of those beautiful feelings are and we go into the past or we go into the future which is where all of that negative uh, emotional turmoil is so that's really the first step so become conscious that we are thinking you if you start to pay attention too much to what we're actually thinking about or what you're actually thinking about it can cause a, ne a negative uh, vicious cycle and it's just not as productive as understanding that it's that we're thinking period that's causing that so once we become aware, the next step is to really question and understand, okay, I am thinking, and that's the root cause of, of just all of this suffering. Once you become aware of that fact, that's most of the heavy lifting, to be honest. It's just when we're unconscious of what we're actually thinking about and that we're thinking, we just get swept up into this, this sea of tumultuous negative emotions. So become aware of it, then if it helps, you can also ask a question. So once you become aware that you're thinking, 
you can ask yourself a question that opens up different possibilities for you in the present moment. What am I not seeing? Or what do I need to see? What is this tr actually trying to teach me? What do I need to become aware of now? And if you're actually trying to create something in life, which is just our natural state as well, which is uh, just a, a beautiful state of, of pure creati creation, creativity, what wants to be expressed through you right now? Once you understand and ask yourself that question of what actually wants to come through me at this moment? What do I what do I feel inspired to do? Then it starts to open up all of these different possibilities for you that you didn't see prior when you were stuck in the past or in the future. So ask yourself a question. It doesn't have to be that question, but ask yourself a, a what I call is like a divergent question. So convergent questions narrow your focus and it forces you to actually think and that causes a lot of suffering. So questions like, why is this happening to me? That's a convergent question that you're trying to get it a singular answer out of, which do isn't very productive because in life, there's not one answer to anything. There's infinite possibilities. There's infinite answers in the actual present moment. So what you want to do is ask divergent questions. What other things am I, am I not seeing? What other possibilities are there? What wants to be expressed through me? Those questions are divergent questions. So you can see convergent questions try to extract something from the universe and try to really like it forces you into one single answer and you don't really want to be cornered like that because it's just not true and and that's an example of that is black and white thinking if i don't do this then i'm going to go broke or something terrible is going to happen black and white thinking is, is is just really negative thinking um and it's just thinking in general so what you want to do is is, is ask divergent questions in order to allow yourself to experience and open yourself up to all the possibilities in the present moment. So once you ask yourself that question, really just allow yourself to be. Don't try to force an answer. Don't try to think of an answer. Just be there, sit with the question and just explore. And once we're in that open state, what happens is we're in a state of receivership. And this is when you're accessing something much bigger than just yourself, bigger than your mind, bigger than your brain. and more importantly, bigger than what you can think of. When we try to use our minds to logically think of answers, what we are doing is we can only reference the past or things that we know. And so if you want something different in your life, you're going to have to do something different, right? That's the definition of insanity. Is if we just keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So we have to have new thoughts in order to have new experiences and have new uh, profound feelings. To do that, we must let go of what we're currently thinking. And once we let go of that, then we enter this space. We are, we're actually entering the unknown, which, which can be scary. But once we're in that unknown, we're in that state of receivership, then we can have new thoughts. And we're accessing, you can call it a million different things, God, the quantum field, infinite intelligence, but you're accessing something much greater than yourself when you open yourself up and you're asking these divergent questions, which aren't really narrow focus and don't have one singular answer. So that's how you can begin to download thoughts from the universe that can then change your life. It will tell you what to do. And another way I like to describe this is following your intuition. Intuition is never logical. Your rational thinking mind is always relying on logic and past experience. If you want something different than what you've gotten in the past, we have to let go of that and enter uh, the, the state of pure possibilities, enter the state of abundance, enter the unknown, which is in the present moment. And once we're open to that, and we realize that we're okay, and that we're not gonna die if we're in this, this state of the unknown, um, but understand that that's where abundance is, that's where pure possibility lies, that's where things uh, different things can come into our lives. That's where transformation occurs. It's in the present moment. Can occur in the past, can't occur in the future. So once we are in that state now and ask yourself those divergent questions, just so many different miracles can come into your life. This is how you create space for miracles. This is how you create space for change. In order for there to be creation, new creation, there must first be space. So we have to create this space within us this container where pure possibilities can occur, which means letting go of all that past stuff, letting go of our thinking, letting go of what we think we have to know, what we think we, we have to think about. Once we let all of that go, then we are an open book. We are a blank page, we are an empty canvas, which anything can be written upon, anything can be painted upon. So that's my little uh, explanation on why it is that we are controlled by our thinking until we become aware of it. 
And this is how we can actually begin the process of transforming ourselves and allowing more miracles to occur in our lives and to follow by following our intuition and really creating space for, for just amazing things to happen. So thank you again for being a part of this episode. If you really enjoyed it, definitely leave a review just to let me know how this is going. Give any feedback. I, I welcome all of it. Good, bad. doesn't matter to me. Feedback is all feedback. There's no good or bad. It's just what is. And so thank you again for being with me. Definitely uh, let me know what other topics you would like me to explore with you and to talk about. And I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.